Welcome, everybody. My name is Jonathan Sanders. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Light. Light is a new company we started a year ago to help large multinationals with the use of AI to do everything related to vendors, planning, and procurement. But we're not going to speak too much about that today. Today is all about artificial intelligence. And uh, just a few practical notes. Bathrooms are out there to the left or to the right. Um, you're not allowed to bring coffee inside of this venue, but you are allowed to drink your water. Um, in a short moment, I'll introduce Clint Kaskor. Uh, my introductions will be short and concise. Um, and when it comes to the breaks, kindly uh, go and get your coffee uh, on time and come back on time. The agenda today is very packed, and we look forward to a great day uh, and debate. One gentle reminder, as in the cinema, kindly put your mobile phones on silent. And without further ado, please welcome Clement Kaskor for the opening statement. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. And thank you, Jonathan, for this uh, opportunity. Now, I've been given just a few short moments here at the very start of the program to welcome you. And I've given this a little bit of thought as to where I would place my focus and what I would talk about. My main message, I think, to you this morning is we want you to ask questions of yourselves today and we want you to ask questions of the panelists that you're about to meet. Now, you're all here, of course, because of the speakers who will take to the stage. And you should really use the opportunity to ask the questions, as I mentioned, of them and of yourselves, because the curse of modern life, I think, is that we are constantly wondering and challenging ourselves and asking whether we are in the right place at the right time. Today you are. This is the right place and this is the right time. The first thing you should do is basically just look around and reflect on the room in which you're sitting. We are, of course, in Club Tutikl. I know that some of you are from out of town. If you've never been here before and you are wondering what is this building, one answer is to say that it was erected by a Danish industrialist. He built Carlsberg into Carlsberg and you will all know the significance of that for Denmark and where we are now. Back in the 19th century, he erected this building as a museum, but it is a very special and very unique sort of museum. And when I claim that we are in the right place at the right time, that is the place. Because it's not just any old museum, essentially. It is a transmission system for beauty, nothing less. That was the thought, that was the notion he wanted, Carl Jacobsen, to leave behind a monument, a transmission system for beauty that could transmit, broadcast essentially, these artifacts from the worlds in which they were created to the world and to the century in which he was living at the time. And the hope and the intention was to leave it behind for people like us to see and appreciate. And maybe to ask the question, who do we talk to? Who are we addressing? Why are we here? And this is why this is the right place at the right, at the right time. Because that is essentially the question that we are asking ourselves today. Are we merely concerned with having answers, easy answers, ready answers for the questions that will be asked of us within the next year or the next couple of years when it comes to artificial intelligence and all the significance that it will have? It's not a question of if, it's only a question of how. It's not a question of when, because when is, is now, is where we are. Or are we more concerned with essentially asking questions to be able to answer them five or ten years into the future? Now, if someone has asked you where you were going today and what this is about, you might be forgiven if you've said, well, it's about technology and it's about new technology. And that is true in a sense. We are here to talk about technology, and we are here to talk about the newness of it. But in a sense, that's not the more fundamental question, I think, that we will leave you with here today. The more fundamental question is that the technology is not as new as we might be imagining. We have, all of us, and every single person on the planet who has logged onto the internet within the last 30 years, essentially left the world and the time and the era in which we were living. We have now 
for decades and 30 years is a long time, lived in a completely different reality. Only this development has taken place so slowly that we have adapted, maybe not in the ways we think we have adapted, we have changed, and maybe not in the ways that we think that we have changed. So yes, this technology is new, but in a sense, we have already lived with it for 30 years. And when we say it's about technology, maybe that is only the first question. Maybe the second question is that what this day is and what this conference is, is really about us. What is our role? Once we've talked about technology, once we've talked about what we would imagine that it could do for us, once we have been a little bit afraid of it, once we have been frightened, once we have learned to utilize it, once we have invested in it, once we have learned how to harvest the results from it, that is the question I think we're left with. And I think this is the reason why this exact discussion is spreading uncertainty uh, in a time, of course, in, in the history of the world that is already uncertain and is spreading fear and at least anxiety at a time in history that is already full of both. So it's not essentially about the technology. It's not about what we make the technology do for us. It is about who we become and what role we see for ourselves in the world that we are entering. I would make the claim that over the past 30 years, we have changed maybe in ways that we haven't been prepared to and maybe in ways that we should question ourselves. I think that we have learned discreetly behind the scenes to adapt to the machines and to essentially follow the movement and follow the development, the technological development where it was leading us. I think the questions that are posed by artificial intelligence at this precise point in time, and this is why this is the right time to ask these questions, beckons us to reflect on this in a more fundamental manner. And that is why that's the key message today. Not just to ask the obvious, evident questions and to get answers for them that can work in three or six months' time, but to ask more fundamental questions and to get into the level where these things become simple for a time, for a moment in time, only to become more complicated and complex again. We shouldn't be afraid of this, or if we are, we should learn to work and to reflect on these issues despite the fear that we are harboring. Because I think that is the lesson of the last three decades. The lesson is that if we only follow what happens, if we only try to come up with some kind of notion of where the world is heading, so we can make sure that we won't be left behind, we are not leading the world. We are not leading the companies that we create. We are not essentially making the right decisions, not on our own behalf, on the behalf of anyone else. Now, this is truly significant, of course, for Europe. Because if we look into the next 10 or 20 or 30 years, we know absolutely, with absolute certainty, that China will do everything it can to lead the pack. We know with absolute certainty that the United States will do exactly the same. We can look around the world and we can see startups around the globe that will try to do the exact same. If we look to Europe for the past three decades, we are facing a more difficult question. Because if Europe continues to underestimate the value of technology, if Europe continues to underestimate the challenges that we're facing, in 30 years from now, we won't be where we are today. We will be, have been left even further behind, and we will be having a very, very different conversation from the one that we can have today. So that is why these questions are the right ones. Not the easy ones, but the right ones. This is why we will do our best to find answers today and make sure and be certain that this is the start of a conversation, not the end of it by any means. And if you find yourselves wondering throughout the next few hours about what all of this means, and if you find yourselves questioning 
whether any of the knowledge that we can truly gather on a day such as this will be of any worth and value in six months' time or 12 months' time. Look around you and reflect on the fact that a long time ago someone said, well, there is such a thing as beauty. There is such a thing as truth and beauty. There is such a thing as something that is, if not eternal, quite close to it. And we can build, just as this museum and the room in which we're sitting, we can build a system of transmission to speak to ourselves and those who follow us down the line. Welcome. Jonathan.